back at it again with another WWE pay-per-view result video. That's right, this is for the WWE 2016 Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Now, if you're here watching this right now, you're most likely here from the prediction video, or you just want to know the results. But the prediction video that I did for this pay-per-view will be in the description down below, so make sure you head on over and check that out. And if you are here because of that, thumbs up to you, sons and daughters and dogs, whoever you want to be. <laughs> so guys, this is the WWE 2016 pay-per-view of Money in the Bank results video. So, let's get right into it. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you head on over to the WWE Network and you check it out right now. So there's your warning. If you haven't checked it out and you don't want to know the results, and you don't want me to spoil it, then stop the video now, go and watch it, and then watch me, if you want. So, let's get into it. We started off with this one, like this pay-per-view is similar to like a WrestleMania type of quality thing. There are matches in this that deserve to be WrestleMania type of matches. I couldn't at the time. So, we're still happy with this pay-per-view. In my opinion, this was a pretty good pay-per-view. Um, so, let's get into it right now. I'll start the predictions before I talk about those matches. So, you know, go match by match. Their prediction, like that I did in the video before, will be right before, like I usually do. So let's get into it. So, we're starting with the pre-show. We had Golden Truth vs Brizengo. Now, Brizengo was burnt to the shithouse. They had scabs and peeling skin, all because of the Golden Truth apparently locking them, uh, locking them in a tanning booth for more time or more heat. Well, it's probably the same time, normal time, kind of thing. But heat's the heat, and they got burnt to the shithouse. Now, they had Peeling on their tits, and they were red, and they were like pinky color, and it was pretty damn funny because the slaps of the tits and the chest were pretty damn fucking good because they were screaming like it was hurting. So to, let's get into the prediction first. So in this one, I predicted Golden Truth to win. I was rooting for them to win, and I also predicted them to win by pin. I said our Truth would win, but let's get into it. So. In this match, it was pretty good, there was a lot of good moves, and pretty much ended up coming down to Goldust getting the win by hitting his finishing move on Fang Anger. So they finally got the win that we've been waiting for them to actually get for a while. They had three matches as tag teams and lost two of those first two matches, and then they finally win one. So good work for them. I'm happy that they did that. Now this second match on the pre-show was kind of just thrown in there. They didn't really live up to the hype that it should have. It should have been a better type of quality match that we had. But they just kind of threw it in there because this match, you know, this pay-per-view had 10 matches on it. So they're like, okay, well we gotta kind of throw another match in there just to make it a little bit interesting, you know, on the pre-show. We can't just have one match on the pre-show. So this match was the Dudley Boys versus the Lich Dragons. Now in this match, I was reading for the Dudleys, but I also predicted the Luchas to win, and by pinfall, and Kalisto would get the win. Now, this match, to cut things short, it wasn't really that much of a match to kind of talk about things. There was a bit of bullying of Kalisto where they were picking on him, but other than that, Sin Cara got the win on, I think it was Devon, so they got a win. That's 2 0 for me, guys, prediction wise. Now we head into the Money in the Bank show. Like the, the pay per view actual show. Now, we started off with a big match. It was the WWE Tag Team Championship Fatal 4 Way match. So, in, the, in this type of matches, you have four teams on each corner of the ring. And so, for example, you have Cass and Big E. So, you know, if Cass was to get too close to the board, one of them could tag in, and then Cass would have to get out, and they could take his spot. So, that's similar to how this would work. Now, I've seen these matches before, these matches usually are pretty good, and this match was a WrestleMania type of match. It could have been on the WrestleMania card and people would have been happy. Now, there was some mad finishing moves, like you had the club hit their tag team finisher, they got broke up. Then you had the Enzo and Cass hit their finisher, broke up. Ford Villains hit their finisher, it got broken up as well. And now towards the end, I was happy with the, res with the results of this. Because in this match, I had predicted that the club would win by pinfall, and I was rooting for Enzo and Cass. But, in this match, it wasn't really too good of a result, but I was still happy with the result. So, you may as well say, towards the end, Big E and English were the legal men. Now, Carl Anderson had tagged in on English, so English was meant to get out. But the ref realised, and he said, you know, tag, and then they went for the pin on Big E and then it got broken up and then 
I don't know why, but New Day ended up pinning English. And the ref counted one, two, three. I was like, English was illegal. Commentary people even said that English was legal. I was like, no, he wasn't. But oh well, fuck it. New Day retained. I'm still happy with that. I would have been happy if Enzo and Cass won, or the club won, or New Day retained. And they did retain, so I'm still fucking happy with that, guys. So, heading into the next match, we had Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. Now this match is, we've seen this every fucking hey view. It seems like we've, we've been seeing this match for the fucking past year. <laughs> but really, we've just had to be seen it at three, like, this is the third hey view now, in a row. Extreme Rules and Payback is on verse, and they, you know, trade victories and bosses and shit. We've seen them verse each other Raw and Smackdown, and attack each other, and low blows, it's just, it's non-stop. And now these guys, are, if my, if my opinion, with my opinion in this match, it should have stopped. And it should stop after this one. Um, I don't know if I said my prediction for this one, but I was reading for Ziggler, but I predicted Corbin to win by pinfall. Now, to cut this pretty short, Corbin wins with a end of days, because, you know, we've seen this match so many times, it gets, it gets so boring talking about it. There's some good, like, good moves in there, there's some mad, like, clotheslines and just drilling each other, but Corbin gets the win. That makes me... Three and one. So then the next match after that was the WWE Women's Tag Team match. Now the two titles that aren't on the line in this pay per view are Intercontinental and the Divas are the Women's Championship. Now in this match you had Charlotte and Dana Brooke versus Becky Lynch and Natalia. In my opinion, this was a good match, but they should have scrapped this match, not had this match at all, and they should have had the first ever WWE. Women's money in the bank match, guys. If you believe, if, like, if you believe that they should have done that, and you reckon that that what I just said right there should have fucking took place instead of this match, hit that like button right now, and let me know in the comments below. Now, in the comments below, let me know who your six divas slash women would have been if you if this match would have happened. Who you would have chosen? Because the people I would have chosen to be in this match would have been Paige. I would have had Charlotte sitting at ringside. I would have had Paige, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch. Summer Rae, Natalia, and I would have thrown Dana in there as well, so that Charlotte could, you know, feel like, oh, okay, if Dana Lynch, she ain't gonna cash in on me, I can control her. So those are the six women I would have chosen if that match did take place, but maybe WWE will take my advice, and they will do that next year. So, back to the match. I was rooting for Becky and Natalia, I predicted them to win, and by submission. However, towards the end of the match, um... Natalia had the sharpshooter locked in on Charlotte. Dan Brooke grabs her by the hair, and then uh, Becky grabs her. Now, um, Natalia lets go of the sharpshooter, and as she turns around, she gets a face full of Becky, pretty much, because Natalia gra uh, Dana grabs her and throws her head first. Now, they didn't go head to head, it was more, um, I guess you could say it was more Becky's forehead on the side of Natalia's face. And now this fucked up Natalia so much that she got hit with the natural selection. One, two, three, Charlotte's the win. Now, that's my second one wrong, so that's three to two, I think it was. Yeah, three to two, prediction wise. But that was a good match nonetheless, but like I said, they should have had the women's money in the main match because it would have been intense. And it definitely would have been a WrestleMania type of match. Now, heading in to the next match, we had Apollo Crews versus Sheamus. Now, this match, it could definitely help Apollo get over with the crowd, as Seamus being the bully type of heel that he is. He can wrestle really well, he can sell the heel. Now, Apollo, ever since coming to the WWE, like, a, like ever since coming to the main roster from NXT, he hasn't lived to the hype that Enzo and Cass have. They, they, like, he's lived to the hype, but just the fans get behind those two more than they get behind him. And he's kind of sizzling now, like I said in my prediction video. Seamus is the one helping get the crowd back in. So in this match, it was pretty good. I was rooting for Apollo, and I also predicted him to win by pinfall. Now, this match was pretty mad. There were some mad moves. Seamus beating him up, teaching him lessons and shit. But Apollo ended up getting the roll up. One, two, three. Apollo wins. That's another prediction right for me, guys. So, the next match after that was the match that everyone has been waiting for, it was the dream match. It was John Cena versus AJ Styles. 
Now this match, of course you can tell I was rooting for AJ big time because he's one of my top favourites and he always has been. I was also predicting AJ to win by pin. So, this match started pretty good. AJ kind of threw John Cena off, mad rolls, flips, stuff, stuff like that. And Cena was like, holy shit, I did not expect to be doing this shit. Ever since his return, he hasn't had a match since. So he, you know, ring rust in a way. So, pretty much, this match was pretty good. This was definitely a WrestleMania type of match. There was mad F, like, at double A's or attitude adjustments. I, I like to call them the FU like they used to, but I don't like John Cena, so I don't really care. So when, when he hits his finisher, I'm like, FU John. <laughs> but um, he failed the button up shuffle multiple times, and then he also locked in the SCFU on um, AJ. AJ didn't tap, which was good. And then AJ ended up locking in the cuff, Crusher, which I was waiting for. Cena was screaming like a bitch. <laughs> you know, that was fucking good. And it fucked up Cena's leg. And that's why he could, when he finally did hit the five knuckle shuffle, he was like, you can see me, and then just dropped the fist straight away instead of running for the throat. He's like, no, nah, I can't do that. And then he tried to do multiple like, like, like attitude adjustments, but failed. AJ hit him with the Styles Clash, which was fucking awesome. Um, I can't remember if he was a phenomenal forearm, I think he didn't end up hitting him with that at the time. But, Cena had him in the attitude adjustment towards the end. Now, AJ was, you know, kicking his, uh, kicking his legs wide, like, you know, rapidly in the air, trying to throw Cena off. Now, the rest of Damar should have known not to be in that position. He got kicked in the face, but that was his fault. His stupidity for being there is when he knew that that was going to happen. He got knocked the fuck out, and then Cena hit the FU. Well, the attitude adjustment, one, two, three, he should have got the win. However, the ref was out, so the club comes down, Anderson and Gallows, and they lay him the fuck out with the magic killer. And then they put AJ on top of him, and the ref gets in there, one, two, three, AJ wins. Now that's a prediction right for me, guys. I was happy that AJ got the win over Cena, but I would have been more happier if AJ actually won, and the club didn't help him. But he didn't, I don't think he even wanted the club to help, because... They just kind of came out to help AJ get a win because we all know that AJ's not really on the best momentum roll with pay-per-views. Like, he came at the Royal Rumble, didn't win. First Jericho at WrestleMania, didn't win. First Roman twice for the WWE World Heavyweight at Extreme Rules and Payback and lost both times. So he needed the win. He won, but it wasn't the way I was expecting it, but I'm still fucking pretty happy that he did win that. Because fuck you, Cena. <laughs> Too fucking sweet. Um, then we head into the Money in the Bank ladder match. Now this match was pretty good. In this match we had Dean Ambrose, Sami Zayn, Cesaro, Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho and Alberto Del Rio. Now in this one I was rooting for Dean to win and I kind of predicted him to win. Actually no, I think I was rooting for Owens to win, but I predicted Dean to win. I didn't mind if Owens was to win or Dean or Zayn or Cesaro. Jericho in it and same with uh, Dario, but this match was awesome, there was some mad drops, like, I think it was, what was it, Owens got dropped on top of a um, sideways ladder, and I was like, oh, Cesaro got smashed head first into a corner on a ladder, just some fucking heavy moves, Cesaro got low blowed on the ropes, Owens landed, you know, nuts first to a rung, and it really did look like, so towards the end, it came down to the last three people were Zayn and Owens were up there and then I think Zayn got laid out. He got hit with like a top of a power bomb onto a ladder and then Owens threw him out. He was going, Owens was going for the champion, uh, was going for the money in the bank briefcase. Dean got up there and then he was just ramming, so he grabbed Owens arm and he pulled it through the run and he was slamming his head right into there and then Owens ended up falling and then Dean cashes in and gets the part, or gets the briefcase, and then miss the Money in the Bank of 2016. It's Dean Ambrose. That's another one right, guys. So far, only two wrong, and Dean won the briefcase. So that is fucking awesome. Then we head into the next match, which was the United States Championship match between Titus O'Neil and Reset. Of course, we knew this match was going to happen the way it was meant to happen, and I rooted for Cesaro, I must Cesaro, for Rusev. I said he would win um, by submission, and I was predicting he would win too. Now, Titus was kicked in the front row, um, it was Father's Day over there or something, and pretty much Rusev was kind of rubbing it in on the kids a lot, and 
It, it got to the point where he had, uh, like, towards the first bit of match, don't get me wrong, it was fucking good. They ran each other and it was like two trucks would go <laughs> smashing into each other. Because they took each other down with clotheslines at the same time and just drilled them both. Yeah, that was a highlight for that match for me. Other than that, Titus didn't really, just, like, had the momentum going that he should have had going into a title match for his first ever singles title. Um, came down to it, reset blocked in an accolade, and Titus tapped. I, I knew that was going to happen. I fucking knew it. And then reset goes over to the kids and he goes, See Dan in there? He's a loser. And then the eldest one who looks like Titus, but he's got like blonde tip of, like, blonde tits in his hair, kind of like slapped reset in the tip. And I was like, <laughs> I would have punched reset, but I wouldn't have slapped him. But oh well. So that was that match, Rusev retained. Um, so really we, we had two, both titles that were on the line so far retained and we had a money to bring briefcase won by then. Now we head into the main event. It was Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight anyway Championship. Now this match is another WrestleMania type of match. It was fucking awesome. Um, this is the first match we've seen Seth in since he came back from his injury like prior with Cena. First match since injury return. And Seth took a little bit of time to get into it, but there was some mad running knees, there was some mad Superman punches thrown, there was some mad collisions. There was a lot of good stuff going on in this match. Like, even Seth did the same move that he injured himself with against Kane, and he still pulled it off and hit the turnbuckle with Splater. And then, like, he even hit the, like, the jumping knee, he hit the Vardikadara, I was like, fuck yeah. He did go for a, uh, he looked like he was going to go for a, um, the Phoenix Splash, but he actually just did a Frog Splash. And he would have probably won after that, if Roman, like, if he didn't jump right off of him after, but he hit a pedigree, Roman hit him with a spear, uh, the ref did get knocked out at the time, I'm pretty sure, so Roman would have won. But then the ref got back in after, um, he went for a second spear, um, Seth jumped and kind of caught him mid spear momentum and boom, pedigree him. He kicked out. Roman speared a barricade <laughs> to try and hit Seth. And pretty much towards the end, Seth hit a pedigree. One, two, three, and your new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Seth Frickin' Rollins. Fuck yeah! Now this was fucking insane. AJ winning, and then Seth winning, and Dean winning the money today. I was fucking ecstatic. I was so fucking pumped. I was like, yeah! When he got, when he went for the pin after the second pedigree, and they went, one, two, I was like, oh, come on, come on. And then three, I was like, yeah! I was so fucking happy when he won. Two times, WWE won a great champ. He never lost the title in the first place to Roman at all. He had to vacate it, so he finally gets it back. That's awesome. And then he's celebrating, and then next minute, <laughs> Dean comes out. I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, at least Roman lost the title and Seth won. So if Dean was to fully cash in, I would have been, like, so I didn't want him to cash in. I did not want him to cash in tonight on Seth. If Roman had won, yeah, cash all, cash all the way, you know. But I did not want him to cash in on Seth. But because he did, if he did fully cash in, I wanted him to win because I didn't want him to be the third person to fail at a cash in like John and Sandow did. So, he, like, Seth's waiting. He's looking up the ramp, waiting for Dean to come, and then Dean comes from behind and hits him over the head with a briefcase. And then, pretty much, I think he did hit him with the dirty deeds, I'm not sure. But then he cashed in, they rung the bell, and then he hit a dirty deeds on Seth. One, two, three. Dean wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And that was pretty cool. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not pissed that Seth lost. I'm still pretty happy Seth won the title on the same night, and I'm pretty happy that Dean won, and that his cashing was successful. But I'm, I, was, I would have preferred Seth to have the title for longer. But now, guys, all three former Shield members have been WWE World Heavyweight Champions. And that's the first time that we've had all three former members of a faction hold the title on that same night. Roman went in there with Ash Champ. Seth took it from Roman, and then Dean left with the title. So that was pretty cool. Now, I was pretty damn happy about that. I predicted that Seth was going to win anyway at the at the get-go in the prediction video. 
I said I was reading for Seth and I was saying he was gonna win my pin. I got that right. So in this pay-per-view, I got eight out of ten predictions right. I'm pretty damn fucking happy with that myself. My predictions are actually getting better. I think, you know, I should go well on the next pay-per-view. The next pay-per-view, I'm pretty sure it's Battleground. Uh, maybe we'll have a triple threat for the WWE World Heavyweight title. Uh, I don't know, maybe. It'll be interesting, Dean, Seth, and Roman all, all going at it, former Shield members for the one title. That'd be insane. Now, 8 out of 10, that's pretty damn good. But, you know, that, that last one with Seth and Dean, I did not expect him to cash in. I was thinking, okay, well, maybe he'll live up to his word that he said on the Embrace Asylum, and he will cash in if he was to win. He said he could if he wanted to, and he did. So, now yeah, we have a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Seth now, so this is the way it goes. Roman's a three-time champ, Seth's a two-time, and now Dean is now a one-time champ. So all SHIELD members have held as the main title. So now if they were to reform the faction, there would not be that much, you know, hate going around, because they've all held the title. The only person that hasn't held something that the others haven't held was Roman. He's never been Mr. Money in the Bank, but oh well. So guys, if you liked this result video, make sure you hit that like button hard. But not too fucking hard, guys. Don't break your computers. And while you're here, hit the subscribe button to join the Dark Squad. And spread the word of the Dog to everybody you know. If you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, in the links are in the description down below. Let me know what your favourite match was on the card in the comments section below, guys. And also with the WWE Women's Money in the Bank match, who you would have chosen to be in it if you could have had it. With current divas, of course, like women, of course, that aren't injured. Um, and yeah, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this result video. I hope you all enjoyed the pay-per-view as much as I did, because it was pretty damn good, in my opinion. I know there's five weeks until Battleground, so I don't know if NXT will have a pay-per-view, but until then, just stay tuned and watch This Week in WWE with the j of every damn week, because we're up to episode 22 next week, so we're doing pretty good. And as always, guys, Stay awesome. The chase is at you. See you.